Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I am about to present you a clip from a recent video with Peak Jarvi, the man who created Peak Monsters, my favorite website for buying, selling, and renting Splinterlands assets. And in the conversation, we're going to spend the first 10 minutes talking about a new feature they've developed, which allows you to sort your cards into separate collections. This is really important for those of you who have a large number of cards, because if you want to have five or 10 or 20 that are specifically rented at the end of each season, this allows you to sort them into one collection. Maybe you have a, a separate group of cards that are going to delegations for one friend and a second friend and so on. This can really help you organize your deck and, and really stretch the use that you're getting out of each of your assets. And so I think it's going to be really interesting, especially to my friends who have a lot of cards like I do. That's the first 10 minutes of the video, but then we spend the last about 20, 30 minutes talking about how to build a, a bronze level water splinter deck. And I think this is going to be really applicable to both bronze and silver level players because it would be bronze if you just used the water cards as a full deck. It would be silver if you took this deck and slapped it together with, you know, the earth splinter deck I'm going to show you tomorrow. And we, you know, you would just create three separate decks, water, earth, fire, put them together. That's 15,000 power. Now you have, you've created a 15,000 CP deck. So I think it's going to be really interesting in, and in, in you can see how the collection tool is utilized to organize these different builds um, and, and then make them maximally useful. So I hope that's interesting. And if it sounds interesting, make sure you stick around and stay tuned. Before we get into it, my name is Dwayne Cunningham and I go by Infidel1258. And on the channel, we cover Splinterlands all day, every day, because it's changed my life and I think it can change yours. So let's get into it. I'm doing a whole series of, of videos about sets, different ways to use sets. Um, you'll see them come out in the, I, I did it one yesterday, one today, and there'll be a couple more coming out. But different things. This is a recap of those you might find interested. I did one to help um, to indicate, like on the show that I did with you, we had that thing where you could see cards that were kind of like leveled awkwardly, like in between levels, right? Mm -hmm. So I created a uh, a set for that, cards that are kind of uh, uh, leveled awkwardly. I guess I did that on another account. Um, but then I also did ones that are my like my best sets. These are all the cards that are like that are being rented at CP 100, you know, CP per DEC 100 and below. Mm -hmm. Like these are the amazing cards because I wanted to get a feel for like which ones are doing crazy good. Like, oh, the Furious Chicken and all that stuff. And another one to find out all the ones that are like interesting. Uh, I haven't posted this one yet, but like all of the cards that have a 50% um, yearly return on asset right now. Wow. Yeah. Um, or 50 cent or above. And that weren't just like temporary mistakes, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that were actually purchasable at that rate. You know, because the chicken, it's like the this, the BCX price is, is okay, but the like level one cards are super expensive. So you know how that goes. Yeah. So are you are you saying that this screen I'm looking at here is a list of monsters that you found rent for fifty percent of their of their value per year, correct? Yeah, presently at this point in time. So now I can um sorry, I can close this and filter them. Um uh, oh, let's do this. And I can see if it's still the case. So it looks like they went down a little bit. And the thing is, they went down because the price of the card went up. So that's not the worst thing that can yeah. happen. <laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. Um, but if I had done it the other day, then, you know, that would have been the case. So, um, including if you go the other direction, uh, you got the Fungus Fiend, for some reason, is way up there, right? Mm. I'm, I'm renting them out at 7.5 and quite a few. Wow. But why are they at 3.5? But you know what? Like half the amount of uh, of this, of 130, is still above 50%. Mm -hmm. so, 
so I, I'm including them. And yeah. I did that with a couple of the other ones. Like two times lower than this is actually below 50%. So I should, um, or no, it's a right around 50%. Well, 2.4 is below 50%. So mm -hmm. um, now I would want to take this one out of that list. But this is really powerful. Up and down and up and down. Yeah. There's lots of uh, people that I know. Well, maybe not lots, but there are there are a number of people I know who make a lot of money from renting their cards, their collections, mm -hmm. and um, to be able to isolate them in this way and to, to say, in particular, these ones I want to really make sure I'm listing before that because often what people like myself will do is we'll use mm -hmm. our cards and then at the end of the season when when we know people are going to want collection power, we'll put them on the market. Yeah. I, I don't really want to bother with it for you know significantly lower numbers but towards the end of the season I, it would be great for me to have isolated those cards that are going to be particularly lucrative as you've done here and then i have i could just go grab that collection and grab them all and list them for rent yeah. on such and such day and it just becomes once you put the effort in in advance it's done once it's probably takes some time to set this up for the first time but then when it's once it's set up it's going to be so much more convenient every week after yeah exactly and then I could see, like in this case, these cards that were on the list were being rented and now aren't. So I'm going to, um, you know, load them at the new prices and still above 50% if they get rented out. So. Wow. Um, so then I'll, you know, like focus on making sure these guys are, are um, have the, the good prices on them. So. Oh. Awesome. Rent. I'm sorry. I was just going to show this as a follow up, I guess, to the other video. See, they're all above uh, 50%, even with the loaded price. Mm. Um, okay. Well, uh, yeah, I did those. I did a couple of interesting sets. Um, some of my sets are over here on uh, the beta site because that's where I had started making them. So I had uh, I'd done uh, a sets for playing in tournaments. Like, I think before we started the video, I was talking about how I went into tournaments recently mm -hmm. and got my, I guess my butt handed to me, like I lost like nine out of 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. So didn't even get the placement and we're talking like high, you know, like there weren't that many people in the, in the tournament. So it's, uh, it's I don't play at really high levels very often. I do really good at silver and bronze, sorry, silver and gold. I've been playing silver a lot recently, mm. but I think the the subject of the video today, I just kind of wanted to show off and um, here's the awkward leveling one. Mm. Sorry, I'm not getting to the subject yet. I'm showing you <laughs> all the cards that are awkwardly leveled all in one spot. Um, that's one of the ones that I did. And then um, I'm testing out a few different ones. Like there are all my... I, I did a video of how to like identify all of your levels, all of your leagues. Here's all of the cards that are in Max League. Here's all of the cards that are in Gold League. Here's all the cards in Silver. And I was able to just kind of show how to add those to the collections pretty quickly. So, And then Bronze just gets to be so many it wasn't worth it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. So... My objective and what I wanted to get feedback on was I want to create um, a bunch of sets for different friends that come in and that they want to play and they want to test it out. And I'm like, well, I've got some cards. Let me hook you. Let me um, let you try it out. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm trying to get a few different ideas using my collection of cards. Uh, what, like, what can I do, uh, especially because they start off in neutral, or I mean, sorry, in novice. Mm. And I found that even novice can be hard with the standard set. Yeah. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. Fortunately, it's just four wins. But at the same time, if you don't have, and because they, they handcuff you to the lowest level. So even if you brought, if you lend them, for instance, mm -hmm. Um, you know, level twos or threes or whatever, they're, they're all going to come in at one. Um, yeah. the, 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 the one distinction that is going to get people climbing faster is the epics and the legendaries. Cause those aren't, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. you can't, um, you, those are not part of the starting, right? So I think they, they are yeah. permissible within novice. I, I could be wrong about that, but that would be one key to stepping out quicker. And, um, 
I'm I'm making a lot of these uh, scholar accounts now, and so yeah. it's um, it's something I'm I'm picking up too, where I'm I'm trying to figure out what is the most appropriate amount of power to share that is simultaneously going to be you know affordable for me to share and then um, allow them to do their thing and, and get as high as they they would want or need. And I'm 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 playing with it, but I think three or four summoners is necessary. And I think even level four is fine if you're reaching for gold, so long as you get that power. And that's been my experience so far. Mm -hmm. um, I have I've given people higher level summoners and enough to make diamond, but then they sometimes end up in gold anyways. And I've given some people silver oh, wow. level summoners and they make it to gold anyways. And so I'm gonna say like three or four summoners at level four and then the appropriate level yeah. of, of tanks and stuff. That's what I'm aiming for. Well, let's uh my my objective is gonna be way easier and way faster, hopefully. Okay. I am looking at people that have never played the game before. Mm. They're novice. I'm I'm looking at a team that will help them from novice into mid bronze. Okay. So that means, in my opinion, we focus on one splinter i like that that makes sense because until they get to what bronze two they don't have to do several splinters right mm -hmm. i agree and then maybe we do one for each um well we'll, uh, we'll try a couple of different ones right mm -hmm. and then maybe i can just replicate it and maybe i can have like here's like the basic one and here's one for friends that i really like you know i really want them to do well you know but the, I think that the more that they have, it almost gets harder. Like they get. It does. I don't. I don't know how to do use all ten, twenty of these red cards. You know, mm -hmm. like absolutely. And it's quite overwhelming, even for a, a player like myself who's played for so many years, to log on, mm -hmm. and you you you've got when all splinters are open, and when there's one unique rule set, and you want to think about it, and there's so many options. If you just had one or two splinters, it simplifies the opportunity. Now you might mm -hmm. you might you might end end up forfeiting certain games, but I think mm -hmm. you're right, especially for novices who are just getting used to this. I think your what you just said is makes a lot of sense. And then what I plan to do is test it. So I will I will make the set. I will uh, delegate it to one of my other accounts and see how it goes. You know, cool. Or make a couple of these sets. So which which set? I mean, I guess which uh, splinter do you find the most appealing? Right now, I'm especially at the lower levels. I'm I'm really really yeah. enjoying um, Kelia Friendel uh, for the water team, and then uh, okay. Obsidian, and then for the from when you, from the cost effective. Um, like the yeah. cost effectiveness is is one of the key re reasons I'm pointing that in that direction. Um, there's some awesome alternatives, obviously, that are going to just really be fun to play with. Um, uh, some of the dragon summoners might be interesting, uh, but then mm -hmm. some of them get a bit pricey. So Qu um, Quicks is, of course, excellent, especially for the cost effectiveness. And so yeah. it, those are kind of my three right now in terms of the... When I'm setting up scholars, I'm trying to make sure they yeah. I equip them with those teams. Okay, so looking through, uh, what I want to be able to do is, is kind of go off of ones that I have a lot of, you know. Yeah. And that aren't being rented out for a lot, and mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. So, um, uh, and then I can make several of them. So, if we're looking at water summoners, for example, I have, um. I have 100 BCX worth of Kelia, so not a lot. Um, I still have like thousands and thousands of packs I should open, um, but uh, that's where we're at right now. I, I mean, we could look at the fact that I have Alrics, um, which are cool, but I can also make a lot off of renting those. Yeah. So I'm not sure I really want to give them to. Um, yeah. To, to delegate them out. Yeah. Um, Brendel is going to be. I would maybe for some someone, but I think that's a separate set for later on. Maybe. Brendel is going to be really inexpensive from a rental revenue, I would think, because it's so common and new. Don't you? I don't know for sure, but is it the Which case? Which one are you talking about, Kelia? Kel Kelia, yeah. Oh, Brendel, yeah. Okay. Is that one the so, rental? It's really, really cheap, I would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I I think so. I mean, we. Well, I, I'm sure. That people aren't even renting at level one, but you want them at level twos, right? Yeah, level two. If you merge it, will it tell us right there what the rental revenue would be for a two? 
Yeah, uh huh, exactly. So let me do Chaos Legion, and I'll just hit this plus one here. Actually, I should do a couple of them, maybe. All right, so now I've got two level twos, but I want to go back to grid mode for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I'm going to hit the refresh button, and there we are. Okay. So I will rent out one of them because then I can keep the other. So we're at, um, uh, oh, very good amount, 23 CP per DEC, <laughs> mm -hmm. 26 ROA, which isn't like super high, but that's just an expensive card, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's not exactly a cash cow. I mean, it's not, it's not a small, I mean, if it, you know, what might be mind blowing Darby is for people who are new to Splendorlands, just to be like shocked mm -hmm. by that, R, that ROI, like the idea that you could get 26% um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, um, uh, I'm well. I'm gonna rent one of them real fast because I have the other one still. So let's hit load, firm. Okay, so one thing I'm willing to let, let's do a Kellya set for sure. Mm -hmm. But I am curious about something real fast to see um, which level to. Um, Summoners have the lowest um, uh, cost. There's, two, I guess, there's two ways to measure it. There's the DC per day, and then there's the ROI, right? Yeah. So that uh, is very, very high right now. Three point two. Why is it three point two when I just listed it at four? It's just that that refresh in that moment since I listed it, a card got listed at three point two. Why the rental so market is going crazy right now. Like I had my sister message me. It's like, all my stuff's getting rented. And it's five days before end of season. Mm -hmm. So. It's funny. Um, it's uh, really funny that it's so much more expensive than, for instance, Varus Alatia. Yeah. I mean. So much more expensive. Look at that. Yeah. So I don't know if there's any of these others that you have a good deck on. Even like this. I think. Uh, this Malric. I, yeah, Mal Malric. I mean, I would have said any of these if I if I thought yeah. the prices would be this. But it, but it, but are these, you know, cheap? Hang on a second. Let me think about that. So it's it's a it's less than a DC per day for a level two, but it would cost how would it cost fifteen dollars to buy that? Is that what it's saying there? Yeah, but uh, I have to think. I have. You have it all. I have them okay. <laughs> already. Yeah. I, well, I guess I don't have that many of them. But if you're, um, I mean, I, I think fire is exceptional. Also, I do think, I do think blue is particularly well equipped right now in the chaos legion and the modern league. Um, so, uh, my personal, my, who I'm running is one okay. conversation and then separately who I think would succeed. I, at I would like bronze. to do blue. What's that? I would like to do blue. So let's, let's mm -hmm. do it. Cause I want to do blue cause I face them so often and I never do blue myself. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. Actually, let's refresh this to see in just the Chaos Legion. Yeah, Kelly is at 3, um, 2.7, 2.4, 2 2.2, 2 2.7. Real Sloan being the lowest. All right, so let's let's go back to um, uh, go back to blue. Let's grab a this card. And um, I'm just gonna hit the refresh real fast. And I'm gonna create a new set with it. So I'm gonna call um I'm gonna call these sets delegate sets. Mm hmm Blue bronze. <laughs> cool, I like this already. Alright. So what should I be adding into it? So now we're just gonna go to the monsters. I would say focus on the Chaos on Legion first, so, firstly, like grab, isolate the filter okay. of Chaos Legion. And then, um, okay. um, Stonefish, because he's a level one. Uh, I think Demon Shark is a, like a pretty much a carry card. At, at, really? I think so. I um, you know, the, even at the lower levels, the trample, is, you know, if you get any sort of, um, He's look at the armor and the hit points, right? It's like six and seven. Yeah. Of course, when you run into magic, you you might be in trouble. But you know, uh, huge magic teams are pretty rare at the 
Like, it's not like there's a lot of overpowered magic monsters or magic people with magic decks. Um, and yeah. so, at that level, anyways. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade one to level two because it's a rare, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or do you need it even at level two or not? Um, I think it get it's 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 one of those cards is at really good at every level. Like it, it, it it's getting okay. the extra hit point, and then it, and I would argue that um, the one weakness okay. is its fewer hit points. So I would say level two, yeah, is a, is a nice benefit there. And okay. um, and I I I I usually play a melee focused water team, and at least in, with the modern cards. And so melee slash archery. So it's like it, magic is a part of it, but I, it's it's a lesser part of it. So I usually look mm -hmm. at um, the demon shark. I think it's the flying squid. Um, you want me to go back to the grid here? I think okay. so. Flying squid is really good for the speed. Again, you, you got two fast attackers, which is really nice. Um, that one's going to be, could be theoretically, look at that, nine hit points at level two. That's a huge okay. se second tank. It has reach. Yeah, with right. the reach, and then so you got two. You, you'll end up having, um, I want to so say I'm, I'm, sixteen I'm or seventeen hit points. Yeah, and then uh, deep lurker is really good. Sorry, let me uh, just make sure take, that they're added to the site real fast. For sure, take your time. There we go, and then, uh, and then uh, what was the other one we did? Flying squid. Yep. Okay. So we added him and then we're doing deep lurker, which is a common card. Do I need to get him to um, level three? Yeah, I think that's correct at bronze. Um, let's see, hang on. Level one, legendary, level two, rare, level three. Yeah, uh, low level. I think yeah, it's but a, I mean, is it going to be worth it? Because I can do five cards mm. and have six health. Yeah, like, I'm, so I can just do a bunch more delegations. I, I think like I think level two too. is pivotal there. I think you could do without. Yeah. You could do with just level two is probably su substantial enough. Okay. So I am going to do a three and a two. There we go. Two combinations. I like um, that. Uh, I haven't been doing that yet, Jarby. I um I'm trying to make delegations for myself and the. What you just did there, grabbing, you know, telling it you want this level. I, I saw the functionality yeah. the other day, but I didn't use it yet. I like that. Yeah, leveling up cards is way faster than it, than it was in the mm -hmm. past. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put a two in there for now, mm -hmm. and then I may swap it mm -hmm. later. I think so. I'm going to play with it just to see, you know, first off. So I would check and see. I don't remember um, how much archery damage the Kulus swim hunter i think it's doing two at the at that level but the right at the top there swim hunter okay it's, uh no, i've no, got no. a lot of them i got a lot of them so. It, so this is a common card so it could do two three five so and is the speed worth it going up from you're gonna two get to three? remember you're gonna get that one speed from kelly so um again you know I would probably maximize everything, but at the same time, I would. So I would probably go three, but I'm. But then again, you know, you've you've you pointed out you want to do many many copies. So that mm -hmm. that two speed is going to be that level two is going to be adequate because you got mm -hmm. you got Kelly a speed bonus. That's why. Otherwise, I would be pretty, you know, strongly saying level three. Every speed is ten percent, right? So it's so important to. But. If you want to do like what you're aiming at is a bit different. Oh. You're not looking for the top top tier of deck. You're looking at like giving people decent utility and and creating as many accounts as possible. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so uh, um, I'm going to do the same thing again. I may swap them for level threes later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to test them at level mm -hmm. twos for now. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the. Um uh Merdali guardian i think it has just repair at the lowest level uh let's let's have a peek yeah tank heal so helpful with that demon shark and and it's rare so okay so you're gonna get the three speed if you went up the level um hmm. three uh, speed to heal though don't you want your heal and your repair to be later you yes be i faster. would say that's true the the there's gonna be times where that where the delay um maximizes your efficiency and there's going to be times where the delay costs you the game um and so uh -huh. it's hard to you know it's hard to it's not going to be like 100 percent 
uh, better when it's faster. It's not going to be 100 mm -hmm. percent worse when it. You know what I mean? Um, I would say. I would you're say saying that you could put make them faster, and if they're level uh, three speed, like they may go up to you know four speed because of Kelia, and that may be, make them harder to hit. Uh, no, I, I guess what I'm saying is that there are times where you oh, yeah. where your opponent, for instance, is running maybe a Kelia magic team, for instance. That would be uh -huh. one of those moments where you are particularly susceptible to magic damage because one, Kelly is going to give it their your opponent that speed, and then two, uh -huh. you're you're running a demon which is relying on its armor, and then yeah. and so as a result, it's going to cut you to the core, skipping your armor and deleting you unless you get the Merdali okay. Guardian heal in faster. But you're not gonna like it's it's so hard to say, and at a certain battles you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna lose because Merdali is is only level okay. one, and in others it's gonna be just fine. So it's it's hard to that's one of those moments. Um, yeah. It's gonna be case by case. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna do a level. I guess I'll do this level two on it just to check it out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there we are. Okay. And then um, uh, I can throw in the stonefish just definitely it's a level one. Definitely, I have five hundred of them and they're cheap. Yeah. And what about, um, so we should focus on epics and legendaries because some of these are going to be included with uh, the starter deck oh, anyways. so I shouldn't include the hardy stone. Fish. Unless you need, unless you want to get them to a certain collection power and maybe we're a little shy yeah. on that. Um, but okay. you, no, I'm not. you're almost, I, I'm not sure what the angelic Mandarin does at the, at the level we're looking at. That's a card I love though, that frog, Ange angelic Mandarin. Okay, so yeah, we don't if if we're thinking of level ones, we don't need to do it. But yeah. if we're doing level twos with one extra health, uh, you know, for that level, I'm kind of thinking to myself, and for the nominal cost, or you know, yeah. it's only one heart hit point more. I'm I'm yeah. I, I'm inclined to say just forget about adding that one. If you if you grow it into a gold level deck or something, then we we yeah. you definitely want that card. Um, up, up. Okay. What about the uh, Igor Dark Spear? What's that one look like at the lower levels? Um, uh, well, it's an epic, so they're not going to have it. Yeah, and the and the question and and at bronze, so are you? What level are you allowed? Is it two? Health. I think you're allowed level two at bronze. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so let me think about that. Well, it's only one more hit point. I kind of feel like just one BCX is substantial enough. I don't actually have any available, but I can. Uh, they oh, are I being see. rented out. For I see. Okay. Very good amounts. Eighty-four percent. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why that's not in my little list that I created the other day. Um, what about the Torrent yeah, Fiend? You only have a couple uh, copies, but if you have a spare Torrent Fiend, that's of course going to be really helpful. So I can add this one, this level one. It's just I won't be able to create a lot of these Igor Dark Spear ones unless I go buy a bunch more copies. Mm -hmm. That's a, in my opinion, this is one of the best cards, and I was just doing a Igor. video. I was just doing a video recently with um, with Jim Morgan, and he was talking about speculation on the the next summoners to come out. And he was saying, and I think it makes some sense that we haven't seen a water team with a plus archery damage summoner. And so um, I think cards like an Igor and uh, that Angelic Mandarin wow. and some of these others could really be. I think it makes yeah. sense. I think it really. I think his theory makes some holds water. And I and uh, man, would the, these cards be absolutely nasty with plus one archery. Wait, so this one is only going to have one archery, though. Mm -hmm, that's true, but for the two mana cost it has, and okay. five hit points, like, I mean, that's a good amount of hit points for two okay. mana at, at bronze. And because it's epic, you're going to distinguish yourself from your opponents because, like we said, those are not included with the starter deck. Okay. Same, same with Nerissa. Well, I've added one to the collection, and I'll just, uh, I can cancel this this rental for 0.3 when everything else is going for 1.4, so... Um, uh, that's good. Or I can buy some more. So, so question, you, you just showed me that you're capable of, um, making them part of the collection, even if they're currently rented. Is that, is that true? That is true. Yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. Cause now if I go in and I tweak things and, oh, it's rented, I, I don't have to come back later and remember. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So look, I'm going to add them now to, um, the delegates yep. set. Cool. Now they're officially in there. Now I can, uh, you know. We'll actually open up a different one so we don't lose our place there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, all right, so yeah, they're here. And if we're in, for example, bulk mode, we'll, you'll see which ones are actually available, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this one I can go. Um, bye bye. Unrented. So there you go. And then, and then um, tomorrow it'll be available. So. And then, um, I mean, all of the legendaries yeah. and epics really. Nerissa is amazing. Wave Brood is going to be a huge uh, distraction, which is such a powerful. Um, Wave Brood is a, an amazing complement to the Demon Shark because, like I said, yeah. the, the the hit points of the Demon Shark is its limitation, but the Wave Brood has got that taunt, and that's going to be that huge distraction. Okay. Letting, yeah. We'll just put a one epic in there. Yeah. Um, a level one. Yeah. Same and then the Nerissa as well. Yes. Yeah, even though we, okay. we're not focusing on magic, but absolutely, this is such a powerful card. And then It'd I would say, big I think you just, I think honestly, right there, you just made an amazing water deck. And of course, all the other ones are nice too. Bok Jira, Fiend, River Nymph, uh, Rivendell, they're all amazing. But I think um, if you were to stop there, you've just created a good bronze winning, um, okay. I think. What about this... The, the river what about her so so good so good of course a lot yeah. of them. oh yeah and it's going to give that it, it's that might be how many collection powers is that is that three thousand no it's one thousand five hundred collection so power you get resurrect you don't get to inspire mm -hmm. yeah you i mean two magic yeah two magic i mean the one the limitation is her is i guess is is river, river hellendale a guy or anyways the speed is the limitation but then yeah. you're getting that plus one with um Hell yeah. So I love that card. Um, and then okay. since you, since you already added Nerissa, you, you now created a bit of a magic play, which is nice. Bakhtira is such a beefy tank, right? With the 11 hit points for six mana. Okay. Um, you already have quite the tank with the brood. Yeah. Which one do you choose? If Bakhtira you're, or the brood? If I, if I was going to do one and only one wave brood, because you're going to get that archery, uh, contribution, even though with the speed it's probably going to miss sometimes, um, you're going to be able to, you're going to have the same, roughly the same number of hit points, but you're also going to get an archery contribution theoretically, which mm -hmm. I like. Yeah. Well, um, uh, now the question is, what else can I add in? There's dice cards. Like so, if I added a level one frost lion, would it even make a difference? Or it's like, no, don't like no. what I'm worried about is adding a ton of cards and then and then whoever I delegate it to, they try, they're like, oh, I'm going to try this Frost Lion. And it makes them lose, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Just because we're adding them to the deck, I don't want to add ones that are going to distract them. Does it have shield at the lowest level? Yeah. So, I mean, th that might be something they would love to have in those content, um, in the equalizer rule set. And then I would say... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it. Other than that, though, it is. It's a novelty, if you know what I mean. It's like a. Yeah. It's a niche. And, uh, and the I two feel. Guns are, I feel the same way know. about two gun and, and Poseidon's a bit cooler, obviously, but. Um, um, Poseidon must. I would think Poseidon rents here's, for. A, here's hmm. the Untamed, which I'm assuming. Um, you still get the Albatross and a few of these others at level one, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Um. Uh, I've got a lot of giant squids. <laughs> yeah. Really. And a lot of Tortesian fighters. Typing narwhals. So. Does the giant squid get blind at level two or three or whatever would be applicable? No, yeah. not Dang. Level four. Blind is so like powerful, it. especially with the speed combo that we, that you know we're aiming at. Yeah. Um, well, it's a very slow card too. Yeah. What about we have um? Two hits. What I mean, whoever you're giving this to would, if you ran, if you either gave a Lobster Damas or a Phantom of the Abyss, you're going to, this is going to be now suddenly also a powerful ma um, uh, magic al alternative. So it'd be like t two different, totally two different experiences mm -hmm. um, on the one account. So I get, uh, let's throw in a uh, level one mm -hmm. lobster. Yeah, that's more than enough. Okay. Um, uh, the Azmari Harpoonist gets you a three, three mm, attack. Very man. Uh, I mean, three ar three archery is so amazing for level one. 
is that worth it yeah then? yeah i mean i would if you if you're it's, what's it's the a quick one free it's, speed. it's only yeah the roi is not so crazy either so i mean yeah absolutely it's going to be a, a huge compliment all right um uh so what else from this these are kind of like little bonus cards lobster the asmare what about what about checking out the neutrals just to see if there's any neutrals that might might really work well oh yeah that's right okay so um, and you're talking uh all neutrals or just probably neutral untamed uh neutrals. untamed and dice and chaos i would i would say and then just kind of seeing where all right um we have we really have one tank so far don't we and then i guess you could say we have an off tank in the lobster damas it might be nice to think about a, 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 a tank um that might fit well with what we're doing of course dr blight is one of the most powerful cards at every level um but it's also a, an arm and a leg so maybe that's not what you want to do but i have a lot of them so well it's so it's so fun. good and then in reverse speed situations i think it's absolutely really? yeah i love it even even at level one huh yeah i i mean i i i use it at the highest levels but you know it the the camouflage is just so it just keeps doing its thing in the background and in and, and yeah. it, you know for four mana cost it's just going to be chipping away chipping away and uh yeah i mean okay. i think it's i think it's amazing okay okay he's in he's in the team and then what about disintegrators uh and and you know an alternative how much is hang on demon shark is seven never let's keep looking i want to find a tank that has demon sharks like seven or eight I think is, it's eight. Is it eight mana? Then, then I then I think disintegrator yeah. because you you know those rule sets were odds and evens, and so it's nice to have a, an odd and an even tank. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah, okay. so then disintegrator also. They're actually very similar, except for disintegrator is slower, which kind of gives you that opportunity in moments where if it's the reverse rule set, this could maybe be a better play yeah. than demon. So do you then want him? Uh, I guess level. Well, he's common, so he's gonna be. Um, what's the maximum? I didn't see what the thresholds were. Okay, so you're gonna. Well, really, two and three are very right, similar. Yeah. Levels two and three are very similar. It's just uh, it's one extra armor. Yeah. So I mean, of course, that's nice, but you know, it's not. That's it. One armor is is like when you compare one armor to say two armor. One armor yeah. is is like ninety percent of the a power of two armor because you know most yeah. people don't have piercing and so that's gonna just stop whatever hits them anyways yeah um maybe i would consider like a looking possibly zenith monk i don't know where his heal begins because i'm thinking his heal begins at level two so he would be it would be available so. i think i think that might make some sense because you want to have some little guys that are going to be able to contribute in the little league uh-huh yeah, I'm just gonna upgrade a couple of these because I've started to realize how good yeah. he is. Yeah, and then in those equalizer matches, when he ends up getting you know ten hit points, it, he's all his heal becomes even more powerful and yeah, yeah. All right, he's he's on the team. And then um, hang on one second, my love. Jarvie, I just got my, my daughter just came in to say hello to me and she wants to see my new oh, glasses. Nice. I'm I'm wearing new glasses, guys, so my wife my daughter came to check it out. What do you think? Yeah. Love you. Hey daddy's doing a video, okay? Because I'll tell you later, okay? Love you. Um close the door, baby, when you go, okay? Love you. Okay, so um what about how much dps does the goblin chariot do at the lowest levels yeah the parasitic i was just looking at the parasitic but like you don't get yeah. you don't get the two attack until um level three yeah one is not good enough not unless it's like the um the one we just looked at the healer we just looked at is only one attack yeah. but that whole thing that's a different intent that's a different use case you the um mm -hmm. i say parasitic growth is a no um i i think possibly the goblin chariot might be interesting i forget how many dps it does it so it's it's two uh, or it's only two two I mean, two yep it's it, two three four i would almost be like a i might not 
kind of thing with that one because look it's so it's untamed it's going to be included you're going to get a level one of it so it's got two archery so all you really would uh -huh. be doing is adding a, a little bonus gotcha. on the speed i think okay what about the um scavo hireling he's got the repairer and you're going to be running one. it you're, you're gonna... already going to get it that's right you're right yep yeah um hmm Possibly we're looking the... at Possibly magi, magi, yeah. Like magi of the cha magi of chaos, or um, maybe the legionnaire. If you've got an extra copy, then you get you could dominate some of those melee um, from any position games. Yeah, magi of chaos two two zero five is what the stats would be two two zero five. Yeah, and it's one um, uh... one is fine. So yeah, give it a shot because we I do would. have a decent amount of. Uh, it's got a crazy. Well, I'm really that. surprised to see these ROIs over there, um, on some of these. Oh, well, they're cards. ones that aren't being rented out 100. percent They're not I being see. rented. I see. I, need, gotcha. I don't update my prices very often. Gotcha. I'm a little behind on it. So 28. Mm -hmm. These were like the end of season, and I have not updated my prices mm -hmm. for most of my cards since end of season. Mm. Uh, does supply does supply runner give you the speed at level one? Oh, I guess it's going to be included. Supply runner is already included, but where does it get that speed burst? No, where it's five, the, level five. No, not no, no good. Is that? Um, um, I legionnaire. I mean, I don't have too many. Okay, I have some rented. Is it going to like do a better job? Like, is it going to distract people? They're like. I want to use the legionnaire instead of using yeah. the card that's actually going to do a better job for them. This is going to be very niche. It's going to be only when the melee is from any position. So that's like one in twenty rule sets, right? So it's very niche. It's not. Uh, it's not necessary. Okay. What about the spirit hoarder? I see you have lots of copies, and you know yeah. it's another magic contributor, but it it's. It's slow. It's got the triage, which is of course very nice. And the triage, remember, works well with the uh -oh. with the big taunt we're 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 planning on using. Okay. And that if you put the taunt in the back, I guess. Yeah, and that's that's what I do. Yeah. I always put the taunt in the rear the rearmost spot. Okay. So we're gonna add that. That feels like a very um, strong blue deck. Let's see here where is my blue deck oh this is it so let me refresh i think someone's gonna have fun with that and they're gonna be climbing into i would think as high as their power allows you know i you know they're gonna be in that they probably have a 2000 collection power i bet they're gonna be in bronze too i bet i don't know why it's not showing up here on this uh set let me just double check Oh, there we are. Okay. Um, uh, so let's do all the ones that are on, that are for rent. Collect them all and uh, uh, get them playable. Mm -hmm. I think that the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, play with one of them with this uh, set. Let's uh, analyze it again. Mm -hmm. So you got 3,800 and, collection power. Uh, so where does that get me? That's... um. So I know bronze bronze three is zero collection power. Bronze two is a thousand collection power. I forget what bronze one is, but it but silver is fifty. By that time I'm gonna need multiple splinters, because you can't just depend on one. Maybe. You know, I yes and no. Yeah. I think this might be a very because you know you created a magic opportunity with this team. You got the melee mm -hmm. play. You've got the neutrals. You got some odds and evens. You got little guys and big guys. I think it's going to be okay. a very functional water team that's going to have a lot of success as long as water's playable. And usually in bronze, they don't exclude splinters. Usually, as to my knowledge, maybe ever. Okay. Uh, I thought they do at level at uh, bronze one. They okay. Start excluding splinters. Okay. Um, but I will find out pretty soon. Uh, do you, uh, have you enjoyed this? Should we try another one or? Sure. 
leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, we could, uh, yeah, absolutely. I've got some time. Okay, perfect. Here is our deck. My Our objective was to create one that I could delegate to a friend that just wants to start off and I want them to win all their games. Not about like best return on asset. I want them to win and uh, to have fun and to enjoy the game. And, and sometimes that means not giving them too many cards that will throw them off, you know, make them like make bad mistakes with it. So mm -hmm. making them focus on just like blue, I guess is one way to do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. So, it's interesting yeah. to see the CP was about 3,800 and I think the value was about 180 us. Yep. So yeah. it just, it, it's interesting to have that in the back of our minds. Cause if we try to move into this one and create a new splinter, um, just, because you know, if if you're going to replicate this, it's nice yeah. to keep it cost effective, and maybe maybe green yeah. ends up being cheaper, or maybe green ends up being more expensive, and so on. Well, you know, of the 185, 95 of it was one card yeah. that I just happened to have a ton of copies of, so I threw it in there. That's right, Doctor Blight, right? And then, and then you've got the lobster, which is you know thirteen dollars, so. Mm -hmm. like a couple of those cards alone and then the spirit hoarder mm -hmm. so i mean what i guess if you looked at just the legendaries in there it's 133 dollars just the legendaries of yeah. the 185 wow and the epics are 24 dollars of it the rares 25 because you have the kelia itself and the commons is two dollars worth of commons <laughs> wild so mostly it's the legendary mm -hmm. Mostly it's the Dr. Blight. So. Um, I don't know how to play the Dr. Blight well, so that's interesting that you, you had me put him in there. I do want to play this set, delegate it to myself first, mm -hmm. and see how it works. What's your, just put him in the back when you yeah. have extra mana? So what I like to do is uh, I'll, he always, I put him in the very back, and and then I'm going to use him uh, behind even i'll put a i'll put them behind even a taunt like in this case you're gonna you're gonna do something like demon shark flying squid um probably probably uh mm, wave brood and what was that triage from the neutral um the legendary well, I mean, you're already at that's some some hefty big stuff right there yeah is demon shark and flying squid you know together with 15. kelly are already 19 mana Plus eight would be 20. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm talking bigger mana and it, and of course it's not pl okay. applicable every game, but when those bigger mana matches do come around, it's important yeah. that you have, you're going to win if you have those, if you have those options and yeah. there will be some moments where it becomes irrelevant, but, um, but if you're leaning on demon shark, flying squid, that's, that's the core of this. And on those bigger mana matches where you where you can afford the taunts and the bigger HP, throwing a blight in the background is going to just be dropping the magic contribution, mm -hmm. which is so nice. Now, um, when you're when you're doing that, so Demon Shark Flying Squid starts at you know 19 mana. What are you doing below 19 mana? Um, on the uh, so mo some of my favorite teams for really low mana are not. It's not really blue. Um, if I'm being honest, my favorite, okay. my favorite okay. teams for, um, for probably low mana are, uh, death or, or maybe even fire. And, but I would be, you know, I'd be happily running like a Zenith monk, uh, with the four mana cost mm -hmm. and, and the self heal, and then just trying to contribute. Usually I find low mana matches. It's not it, magic goes a long way because you end up not mm -hmm. having, um, you know, you don't have like big demon sharks with like you know eight hit points Chip or something like this yeah. so yeah i think magic is something i'd be looking for even lobster damas with his six mana but he has the shield remember and he uh he's so maybe going like a magic direction kulu swim hunter is really powerful with the two archery so what about even as simple as kelia um that four cost neutral tank with the self heal kulu swim hunter and that's that's eleven mana right there, and you're doing you'd be doing three DPS with a self heal, Kulu Swim Hunter the, for archery in the back, and the Zenith Monk in the front for that two cards plus your mm -hmm. summoner. That's eleven mana, and you're twelve, gonna, 12. You, twelve mana. Yeah, that's right. Kelly is four. 
So I mean, but okay. self heal and um, 3D 3 damage output, um, mm -hmm. maybe. 